Hi, I'm Philip from the HANA Academy. In this series of videos, we're looking at the XS Advanced model. In this video, we're going to create OData web-based access to our tables. Remember, in the previous videos, we created a project and we created a uh, database module, HDI container, with a country and region table in it. We defined that through our HTTP CDS. We've actually loaded some data using the Database Explorer. Now we're ready to go ahead and create our OData service. Now you can create an OData service with Java. You can also create OData services OData version 2 with Node.js, and that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's right mouse button on sales and choose new. And this time the module we want to create is a Node.js module. We can give it a name, we can call it whatever you want. I can call it Node.js, for example. Hit next. And one of the options that's been there for a while is enable XSJS support. That's very important for us if we want to just create a, a .xs odata syntax. You're probably familiar if you used XS Classic um, over the previous years with HANA. It means you can work synchronously, do synchronous JavaScript, rather than having to use the, the, the default asynchronous that you get with Node.js, which can maybe be a bit more tricky. Uh, to work with, but your uh, XSJS support is, uh, is quite an easy and flexible way to work. So let's hit next. There's actually nothing new there at that point. What is new in SPS01 is that we can see we've got some differences in the way the project has been created. Now the template's created as a, a little hello world XSJS file saying hello world. Okay, that's not different. But if we look at the package.json, which is where all of the different node modules we're referencing are, you'll see that the module names have changed. So rather than sap-xsjs and sap-xsmv, we see we've got a different syntax. We've got at sap and then forward slash. And this basically means that the, the way that uh, SAP provided node uh, modules are being uh, distributed is through something called scopes. So these are basically scoped names or scoped packages. And by changing to this, it means that SAP can actually publish the SAP uh, uh, modules publicly and they'll, they'll not be confused with anyone else that might happen to have used SAP dash at the beginning because only SAP will publish with at SAP forward slash. This is the way that NPM or the Node Package Manager works when you're working with Node.js. So at SAP is the way to go. And you'll notice that you've got in fact, a, a whole number of them. You've got XSJS test, etc. So they, these these are the kind of um, ways you're going to specify your dependencies, and you've got versions. Now, one of the uh, challenges when you're working with Node.js is making sure you've got the right, maybe the latest version of any particular uh, uh, Node module that you're working with, whether that's from SAP or it's coming maybe from a third party or it's a standard Node one. Now, what's been added with uh, SPS01 of WebID for HANA is the ability to actually check those dependencies and see if you're working with the latest versions, etc., etc. So what you can do for that uh, module is right mouse button. And down in the build section, you'll see there's a show dependency updates. Now, what this will do is it will basically trigger a quick build of your project, and then it will actually identify any modules that you've got that maybe aren't actually at the latest version that you might want to update based on the version of NPM that's actually been uh, used here, the version of HANA you've installed and the packages are actually installed compared to the, the, the script and the code that you've got here. So if we look, the build completed successfully, but if we have a quick look in the uh, log file, you'll see that from that build, we've noticed that there is actually SAP XSN, XSM, the environment settings for working with uh, XS Advanced. And you see that the, the current build uh, is 1.26, and that's the one we've actually asked to use, but the latest available is 1.27. So if you wanted, you might want to consider going up to 1.27 to get the latest capabilities of XSM. It's really up to you how you want to work that. But instead of you having to go to the Node Package Manager and search on this uh, actual uh, module name to actually find out what the latest version is, you can actually just do that for your whole module in one go here. And it will look at all the dependencies and give you information on them all. So this actually could help you uh, save some time and, and be more flexible as you're developing with Node.js. So what we were going to do here is create an OData service. So to do that, let's go to the lib section and create a new file. So a new um, file. 
and we're going to call this services.accessodata. This is not particularly new. However, if you write mouse button, you'll see that you've got the ability to insert an access data snippet to maybe get you helped, get you started with the syntax. But actually what I'm going to do is just get uh, rid of that because I've already got the code we need for our case here in the uh, GitHub repository. We've seen this in the previous couple of videos. So github.com, subpanel academy, XSA repository, and then in sales, HTML5 master detail at the end of it, we've got our services.xso data syntax. So let's just paste that in. So we've got an association, and this is going to be very useful in the next video where we create a master detail Fiori application based on this OData service. So I click save. Now I'd want to go ahead and build and potentially run my application. So we can go ahead and run. So let's go run at, as a Node.js application. And that will take a, a few seconds to actually go through the build process. So the build is complete. We can see that the application is now running and we've got the URL. I'm using port based routing here. So you can see that it's assigned as a port number. So we can go ahead and have a go at running the application, see if it works. Well, we get the default uh, index.xsjs because that's the hello world. But what we really want to do is to look at services.xso data. Let's have a go, see what happens. Ah, didn't work. And there's a reason for that. We've not actually specified which HANA system we're going to use. We've just created no data service uh, on its own independently. So, well, I knew that was going to happen. But what it does is it gives us a chance to look at a couple of uh, quite interesting aspects. The first one is that we need to go to the MTA YAML file. And if we double click it, we've got the MTA YAML editor. So we can see that there is a resource called HDI container. And if we look at the modules, we've got the database and that Node.js. Now this was added for us. Now the database uses the resource HDI container. So I'm going to copy that. The Node.js module doesn't, but it's going to need to use it because that's where our data is behind the OData service. So I can just use the editor here to hit the plus sign and then paste in a requires for that HGI container. And if we just go over to the code editor, you can see what that means. It means that we've got in our Node.js app a requires for name HGI container has been added. We didn't have to write that code. We didn't have to worry about the tabbing and the, or the indentation with spaces. Uh, it was all done for us. So that's great use of the MTA editor uh, when we're working with HANA uh, uh, 2 SPS 01. What we'll also see is that uh, the template has added a number of other things. It's created a service that we'll be able to access and use when we're building maybe uh, the Fury app in the next video. So it's actually done more scripting than uh, has been done in the past. So the template uh, for building a, a Node.js XS JS compatibility app has been improved. OK, let's save our changes to the MTA YAML file. What we can then do is just notice that the node modules, node underscore modules folder was added when we did the build and run. And if we click on it, you'll see this is where we actually get to see all of the node modules actually embedded within the project, within that module. And the at SAP ones will be at the top. So here you can get a list, for example, XS env, it's one we're using. You can have a look at it. You can actually, that's where the code is. But more importantly, you can get to the README MD. And if you look at that, you, this is where you'll get really good documentation that's always up to date, showing for every actual module, such as XSMV, exactly how it works, um, what's been changed in different releases. You see I'm scrolling through the different ways that you can use XSMV, give different syntax examples, et cetera, et cetera. And say, and or normally at the end, you'll also have information on what was added in different uh, releases. So this is where you can get to the README, which can be very useful, and it's actually embedded into your project. So that's in the node underscore modules folder. Right. Well, we've made our change. We've made our reference to the HGI container. So we're now ready to go ahead and do it again. We're going to go to our module and run it again. Now, of course. It's not going to rebuild the entire app from scratch because uh, that took a, a little bit of time. What it's doing is going to basically uh, just make the updates in place in the existing application. So when we're developing it, that means when we're rebuilding and, and making small changes that the application, uh, the testing will, will happen more quickly because the actual getting the app started uh, will just take a few seconds. So the app's running. So it's basically restarted. Let's go to our URL and try it again. 
Now this time we find that it works, we get a result, we get a 406 error back, that's expected because uh, by default OData works with XML but we only support JSON. So we'd need to actually say uh, $format equals JSON when we're working with it. But that's no worries, it's not going to stop it working. For example, we can put forward slash dollar metadata to get the metadata of the OData service we created. And we can see that we've got an entity, for example, called region. So if we want, we could put region. Be careful because that's going to pull down all of the data uh, in JSON format. So we can see here. We've got the different regions, the four regions that we have in our three regions that we have in our data. Uh, and it's also we see we've got the uh, master detail because if we look at Asia, we've got the association with the countries of Asia. And if we click on that association, we can now see we get information for China, India and Japan. So we've got no data service set up with associations. So we're basically ready for building a master detail application, uh, a Fiori application, which we're going to see in the next video. So what we've seen in this video is how we can set up the Node.js application, uh, how we can uh, work with the improvements with the MTA editor. We've seen how the packages uh, have changed. We're using the uh, scoped naming, so at SAP forward slash, rather than just a name that happened to begin with SAP dash. So these are some of the new things with SPS01 when we're working with Node.js. You can find more HANA video tutorials on our YouTube channel. If you'd like to be informed as soon as new video tutorials are published, please subscribe to the channel. You can also connect with us on LinkedIn, follow us on Twitter, and we have pages on Facebook and Google+. Code snippets for all of our tutorials are published to GitHub. Thanks for watching.